The casting for the 1971 TV movie Duel was a careful process. Steven Spielberg, the director, wanted actors who could bring intense emotion and realism to the screen. Dennis Weaver was chosen for the lead role of David Mann because of his ability to portray an Everman caught in extraordinary circumstances. His audition showed he could express fear and determination convincingly. For the role of the truck driver, Spielberg wanted a presence that felt threatening without words. The casting team looked for someone with a commanding figure and found Carrie Lofton, a veteran stunt driver with an imposing demeanor, perfect for the role. The chemistry between the actors was tested to ensure they could convey the tension needed for this thriller. Key moments during casting were when actors read lines and the team saw the fear in their eyes, which told them they had the right people for the film. In the 1971 TV movie Duel, the director used a simple and clear style to show the story of a man chased by a mysterious truck. The director was inspired by everyday fears and turned a simple drive into a thrilling chase. He worked closely with the actors and team, using the desert roads and tense music to make viewers feel the fear and excitement. The movie shows how normal things can become scary and it was made in a way that feels real and keeps you on the edge of your seat. Duel, the 1971 television movie, is a thrilling story of a salesman driving through the California desert who is suddenly attacked by a menacing tanker truck. This movie stands out for its simple yet powerful storytelling, where the suspense keeps you on the edge of your seat. The relentless chase and the unseen driver of the truck make it a classic that's still talked about today. The movie's lasting appeal comes from its ability to tap into our deepest fears with very little dialogue, relying instead on action and suspense to tell the story. It's a testament to the skill of director Steven Spielberg, who made Duel early in his career. As for the actors, Dennis Weaver, who plays the salesman David Mann, delivers a memorable performance. His portrayal of an everyday man in an extraordinary situation is relatable and gripping. Now we'd love to hear from you. What's your most memorable moment from watching Duel? Did it surprise you, make you laugh, or remind you of a personal experience? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We're excited to hear what this classic movie means to you. The 1971 TV movie Duel, directed by Steven Spielberg, was a groundbreaking project that faced several production challenges. The film was shot in just 13 days, primarily on location in the California desert. The set design was minimal, focusing on the dusty roads and a menacing truck that played the villain. Filming on the move was a major challenge, especially with the technology of the time. The crew had to use innovative techniques to capture the high-speed chase scenes, including mounting cameras on vehicles and using camera cars. One notable technology was the use of a camera rig that allowed for dynamic shots from within the car, adding to the suspense. The simplicity of the set and the real-life locations contributed to the film's tense atmosphere, making it a memorable thriller. Steven Spielberg's Duel is a masterclass in suspense, showcasing a simple yet highly effective narrative of a man pitted against a relentless machine on open roads. The film's strength lies in its ability to create tension without relying on elaborate effects, focusing instead on the primal conflict between David Mann and the ominous truck that pursues him. Spielberg's direction ensures that the viewer is drawn into a 90-minute chase that, despite its potential to grow tiresome, maintains engagement through a series of well-crafted scenes and a climactic finale. The cinematography is noteworthy, with stunning shots of the truck in silhouette and dynamic camera movements that enhance the pursuit. Dennis Weaver's portrayal of David Mann is commendable, capturing the character's emotions effectively even as the script's internal monologues fall short. The film's deliberate ambiguity about the characters' backgrounds and motives adds to the intrigue, leaving the audience focused on the immediate danger rather than the why or wherefore. Duel stands out for its raw portrayal of road rage and the psychological battle between man and machine, making it a unique and captivating piece of cinema that continues to thrill audiences without the need for complex backstories or character development. The truck, menacing in its anonymity, becomes a character in its own right, embodying the fears and dangers of the open road. The film Duel, directed by Steven Spielberg, uses its music to support the story and set the mood. The score, created by Billy Goldenberg, is minimal but effective. It uses sounds that build tension like the roar of engines to match the chase scenes. The music is there, but not overpowering, letting the action on screen take center stage. 
Goldenberg worked closely with Spielberg to make sure the music fit the film's tone, adding to the suspense without distracting from the plot. The musicians recorded the score with this in mind, focusing on creating a feeling of unease that follows the viewer throughout the movie. This approach helps the audience feel the main character's fear and adds to the thrill of the chase. The soundtrack is an important part of why Duel remains a memorable thriller. In a quiet neighborhood near Universal Studios, a filmmaker paid a local resident 50 to use her garage for a pivotal scene. The scene sets the tone for the suspenseful road chase that follows. The main character, David Mann, drives a red Plymouth Valiant, which, despite its appearance, has less than 5,000 miles on it. The tension heightens when Mann spots a vehicle that looks like a police car, only to find it's a pest control service vehicle with a clever nod to the director's name in reverse. The 1971 TV movie Duel, directed by Steven Spielberg, is known for its suspenseful scenes. One such scene is the initial chase sequence where the truck first tailgates David Mann's car. Spielberg uses close-ups of Mann's face to show his growing fear. The camera angles make the truck seem large and threatening. The actors, including Dennis Weaver as Mann, convey a sense of real panic that grips viewers. The filmmakers have shared that they wanted to create a feeling of being hunted, which they achieved through the use of real-time stunts and practical effects, avoiding computer-generated imagery to keep it realistic. The relentless pursuit by the unseen truck driver creates a strong sense of danger, making this movie memorable for its simple yet effective storytelling. The direction, combined with the performance and the practical cinematography, makes the audience feel the tension and fear of the characters, which is a significant reason why Duel remains a notable thriller. And a small detail that might go unnoticed, as Dennis Weaver's character stops at a gas station, a red wagon in the background displays Dr. Stringfellow's rejuvenator. This name shares its origins with a story from Rod Serling's Night Gallery, where Forrest Tucker played Dr. Stringfellow, and Lou Frizzle, who appears as a bus driver, also starred. The film's director found his way into the story in an unexpected manner. His reflection is visible in a phone booth scene, a result of an oversight rather than a planned appearance. This accidental cameo became more apparent when the film was shown in European theaters, where the wider screen format revealed him in 18 different shots. The suggestion to adapt the story for the screen came from the director's secretary, who found the narrative in a Playboy magazine and saw its potential for a thrilling cinematic experience. The 1971 TV movie Duel, directed by Steven Spielberg, had a significant effect on both culture and society. It showed a simple yet powerful story of a businessman driving through the desert, pursued by a mysterious truck driver. The film's suspense and the unseen driver struck a chord with viewers, reflecting fears of the unknown and unseen dangers in society. It also touched on themes of isolation and survival, which were relatable to many. Duel's success helped launch Spielberg's career, and its style influenced future thrillers and action movies. The movie's use of the truck as a symbol of terror has been imitated in other media, showing its lasting influence on popular culture. In the early 1970s, a suspenseful chase unfolded on the screen, marking a significant moment in television film history. This production was notable for being made specifically for the small screen. During its creation, a shift in road safety measures was taking place across the United States. The film captured this transition, showcasing roads that featured both the old white and the newly mandated yellow center lines, a detail that reflected the era's evolving traffic guidelines. The story that drove the film's plot was the last short story written by Richard Matheson published in a popular magazine before he turned his focus to writing screenplays and novels. His work laid the foundation for the gripping narrative that kept viewers on the edge of their seats. The 1971 TV movie Duel, directed by Steven Spielberg, received positive reviews for its suspenseful storytelling and simple yet effective concept. Critics praised Spielberg's direction and the film's ability to maintain tension throughout. It was seen as a strong start for Spielberg's career. Audience reactions were similarly positive, with many viewers finding the film thrilling and well-crafted. Duel did not receive any major awards or nominations, but its success helped establish Spielberg as a talented director and had a significant impact on his future opportunities in the film industry. The recognition Duel received played a crucial role in Spielberg's career, leading to more high-profile projects and eventual critical acclaim. In a dramatic turn during the film's final moments, the truck crashes through a gate 
and inadvertently strikes the camera. This unexpected collision is visible in the distorted image and debris seen on screen. Interestingly, the footage used is a reversed image. The film's writer, Richard Matheson, drew inspiration from a real-life encounter with a menacing truck. Lacking paper to jot down his thoughts, he resorted to writing on personal letters. On set, Matheson observed the filming at a cafe and mistakenly believed the actors were genuine patrons, not realizing they were part of the production. Composer Billy Goldenberg was tasked with creating the musical score within a tight time frame of just one week, adding to the intense atmosphere of the film. During the filming of Duel, the cast and crew faced unique challenges. The movie's director, Steven Spielberg, was just 24 years old, and it was his first feature film. Despite a tight budget and shooting schedule, Spielberg's creativity shone through. He used inventive camera angles and minimal dialogue to build tension. The truck driver's face is never shown, adding to the mystery. The lead actor, Dennis Weaver, had to express fear mainly through his eyes and body language as he spent much of the film alone in his car. The crew often worked in intense heat, filming on remote desert roads to capture the authentic feel of the chase. Spielberg's determination and the team's hard work paid off, making Duel a classic thriller. In crafting the suspenseful chase, Steven Spielberg drew inspiration from classic monster films, envisioning the relentless tanker truck as a towering beast on wheels. The director's innovative approach bypassed traditional storyboarding in favor of a detailed map outlining the entire route and specific events of the on-road battle. This map, which covered the walls of his temporary Palmdale residence, served as a visual guide for the film's dynamic camera work. Interestingly, the role of the pursuit driver, which became a defining part of the film, was initially offered to David Jansen, who ultimately declined the opportunity. The 1971 TV movie Duel, directed by Steven Spielberg, is widely recognized for its simple yet effective storytelling technique, which has influenced many filmmakers. It showcased Spielberg's skill in creating suspense with limited resources. The film's use of a faceless antagonist, a menacing truck driver, set a precedent for future thrillers and horror films. Duel's success on television led to a theatrical release and is often cited as a significant step in Spielberg's career, paving the way for his future as a leading director in Hollywood. The movie also inspired similar narratives where ordinary characters are pitted against unknown and relentless forces, a theme that has been explored in various forms in cinema since then. In casting for his early work, Steven Spielberg saw potential in Jean-Louis Trentignan, considering him for the lead role of David Mann. This choice reflected Spielberg's appreciation for Trentignan's acting skills, which he also recognized as fitting for a part in another of his projects, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Spielberg's personal connection to the story stemmed from his own experiences with bullying during his younger years, finding a parallel in the film's narrative of a truck menacing a lone driver. For the character of David Mann, Spielberg was inspired by Dennis Weaver's portrayal of a nervous motel manager in Touch of Evil. He felt Weaver's ability to convey anxiety and paranoia would translate well to the film, particularly in a tense cafe confrontation scene reminiscent of Weaver's earlier role. In a rare departure for Steven Spielberg, the musical score for this film was not composed by John Williams, marking a unique instance in his body of work. Instead, the music was provided by Billy Goldenberg. This film stands out as it was not released in theaters in the United States, unlike Spielberg's other films such as The Color Purple and Bridge of Spies. Additionally, it features a scene where the main character is disturbed by a prank call, a type of call that was banned by the FCC just a year before the film's release. While some European critics interpreted the film as a commentary on American social classes, Spielberg himself viewed it as a straightforward chase movie, likening it to a land-based version of the classic Western High Noon. In the late 1970s, a television episode featured scenes that were originally part of a suspenseful road thriller directed by Steven Spielberg. These scenes included a red car crashing into a fence, and a menacing truck similar to the one in the original film. Spielberg, who was not pleased with his work being reused without his consent, made sure to include a special clause in his contracts to prevent this from happening to his future projects. He was a pioneer in this aspect, setting a standard for directorial rights. Additionally, Spielberg was adamant about capturing the authenticity of the chase scenes on actual roads, rejecting the studio's suggestion to use artificial backdrops. 
This commitment to realism is evident in the details, such as the Chevrolet station wagon's manufacturer plates, which can be seen clearly in the film. In its European debut, this suspenseful chase film was shown in cinemas, a unique move for a production originally made for television. The portrayal of the relentless truck driver was brought to life by Carrie Lofton, who, when seeking insight into his character's motivations, received a blunt description from director Steven Spielberg, affirming Lofton's suitability for the menacing role. The story's origin traces back to an unsettling real-life experience of writer Richard Matheson, who found himself pursued by an aggressive truck driver on a day marked by national tragedy, the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. This harrowing encounter sparked the creation of the gripping narrative that keeps viewers on the edge of their seats. In an interesting turn of events, a board game was created to market the film, but it was not a hit with consumers and has now become a rare find. To prepare for a wider release in theaters, Universal Pictures filmed extra scenes requiring more trucks. Remarkably, only one of these trucks is still around. Additionally, a unique old West Wagon featured in the film, known for its appearance in a Night Gallery episode, adds a touch of historical entertainment to the scene. Initially, the role of the lead character was almost given to Gregory Peck. However, the decision to release it as a television film changed the casting direction. Following the success of Jaws, Universal Pictures saw an opportunity to capitalize on Steven Spielberg's growing popularity. They re-released the film in theaters with a significant marketing push, including trailers and posters. Despite these efforts, the film did not attract the expected audience, likely because it had been available on television at no cost for years. An interesting detail about the film is the design of the menacing truck's front bumper. It features train track rails positioned sideways just below the license plates, adding to the vehicle's intimidating presence. In a thrilling chase, the protagonist displays unexpected athleticism, reminiscent of Dennis Weaver's own past as a competitive track and field athlete. His history includes a notable sixth place finish in the decathlon during the 1948 Olympic trials. In another scene, a tense moment unfolds as the protagonist attempts to aid a bus full of children, with a menacing truck emerging from a tunnel familiar to viewers of the Barnaby Jones series. A standout moment occurs at Chuck's Cafe, showcasing a continuous, uncut scene that lasts for nearly three minutes. This filming technique, known for creating suspense, was executed without the modern convenience of a Steadicam, adding to the scene's intensity. This method, pioneered by directors like Orson Welles and Alfred Hitchcock, has become a hallmark of Steven Spielberg's direction, used to amplify drama in his subsequent films. In selecting the antagonist vehicle, Steven Spielberg was presented with seven semi-trucks and settled on a Peterbilt, drawn to its front design that suggested a menacing face. Dennis Weaver, known for his role in Gunsmoke, brought his character to life in this film, subtly nodding to his past role with a distinctive walk in a scene set at a gas station. Despite Spielberg's early decision to cast Weaver, the actor's participation was confirmed only on the eve of the first day of shooting, adding a last-minute thrill to the production's onset. In crafting a gripping tale of road terror, the creators made a pivotal choice to leave the main character, David Mann, alone in his car. This decision amplified the tension, as Mann's solitary struggle against an unseen adversary unfolded with only his thoughts to accompany him. The entire film was captured in real-world settings, lending authenticity to the harrowing chase. The illusion of breakneck speed was masterfully created not by dangerous driving, but through cinematic techniques and the skill of a seasoned stunt professional, Carrie Lofton. The truck, though it seemed to barrel down the roads at life-threatening velocities, never exceeded 30 miles per hour. This effect was achieved by filming close to the ground and using the natural landscape to enhance the perception of speed, a testament to the ingenuity behind the scenes. In the suspenseful chase film directed by Steven Spielberg, the main character's car played a significant role. Interestingly, not one but three different Plymouth Valiant cars were used during filming. The first was a 1970 model with a powerful V8 engine, identifiable by unique emblems. A 1971 model with a less powerful engine was also used, along with a 1972 model for additional scenes. 
Despite the story being set in 1971, the license plate on the car would have been issued in 1976, a detail that adds to the film's authenticity as similar plates were common in other shows of the era. Spielberg, who later became famous for blockbusters like Jaws, had already made a name for himself with this early work, which gained recognition in Europe after its initial television broadcast in the United States. In a remarkable feat of efficient filmmaking, Steven Spielberg completed the shooting of this suspenseful road thriller in just 12 days, setting a personal record for speed. The film's initial length was only 74 minutes, too short for a theatrical release to extend it to the required 90 minutes for cinemas. Spielberg added several new sequences. These included a tense railroad crossing, a stalled school bus, a phone call scene conveying the protagonist's domestic strain, and an introductory sequence showcasing the lead character's morning commute. Notably, the film features only two named characters, David Mann and his wife, Mistress Mann, emphasizing the story's focus on the Everman's harrowing journey. In a unique detail from the film, Dennis Weaver's character is seen using a real phone number to reach his wife, not the commonly used fictional 555 prefix. The truck, a looming presence throughout, carries different license plates for each state it travels through. These plates often display MC for motor carrier, while the New Mexico plate shows HUP, indicating a highway use permit. Adding to the film's behind-the-scenes stories, Dustin Hoffman was once considered for the role of David Mann, the driver engaged in a deadly game of cat and mouse on the road. These elements contribute to the authenticity and tension that define the film's gripping narrative. Dennis Weaver's earlier performance in Touch of Evil caught the attention of Steven Spielberg, leading to his casting as David Mann. The truck, a looming presence throughout, carries various license plates from states including Wyoming, Nevada, Idaho, Arizona, Montana, New Mexico, and California, hinting at its extensive travels. Distinct audio variations exist between different versions of the film. In the longer cut, the truck's air brakes are audible without the suspension and trailer sounds, while the shorter version emphasizes the mechanical noises as the truck stops at a gas station. In a tense moment, an elderly couple in a red car appears, with the woman urging the man to drive faster, echoing a scene from a later film where a similar couple finds themselves in a comparable situation. Meanwhile, a piece of cinematic history remains standing. The location known as Chuck's Cafe is now home to a French restaurant, preserving the past within its walls in Santa Clarita, California. Adding a layer of mystery, the director once revealed that the truck, a central figure in the story, bore multiple license plates, hinting at a dark past where the driver may have been involved in fatal encounters across various states. In a clever twist, the name of the pest control company in the film is Greblapes, which is the last name of the director spelled in reverse. A notable scene tracks the journey from a gas station to a cafe, covering 10 miles in 10 minutes and 35 seconds, which works out to an average speed of 56-7 miles per hour. This detail is confirmed by the speedometer shots within the same sequence. Additionally, Lucille Benson, who plays the role of the lady at the gas station, would later appear in another of the director's films, this time as a gas station attendant in the 1979 movie titled 1941. The director also brought back the elderly couple seen driving in this film for another appearance in his 1977 movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. In the heat of the chase, Dennis Weaver was not just acting, he was behind the wheel, driving his character to safety. Only when the action called for high-risk stunts did a professional take over, ensuring the scenes were as real as they were safe. The commitment to authenticity went beyond the set, with Universal pausing another show McLeod so Weaver could fully dive into this role. Steven Spielberg, who directed the film, later reflected on his early career. Initially, he saw television work as less prestigious than film, but in time, he recognized that these early experiences were invaluable, shaping his skills and paving the way for his future success in cinema. In the heat of the chase, the color red was chosen for David Mann's car to ensure it stood out against the vast desert backdrop. Interestingly, the same license plate, 149 PCE, was later used in a 2015 film, creating a subtle connection between the two thrillers. Throughout his tense journey, Mann frequently checked his rearview mirror and glanced over his shoulder a total of 65 and 54 times respectively, highlighting his growing paranoia and the relentless pursuit he faced. Before creating the suspenseful chase that kept viewers on the edge of their seats, Steven Spielberg had great admiration for Richard Matheson's writing, 
which had left a mark on him through the television series The Twilight Zone. This respect for Matheson's work set the stage for their collaboration. Dennis Weaver, who played the lead role, held the film in high regard, making it a personal tradition to watch it biannually. The film also cleverly weaves in contemporary themes through its soundtrack, as evidenced by a scene where the main character, David Mann, hears a radio prank call that humorously touches on societal roles and control, mirroring the film's underlying theme of a man's struggle to reclaim his authority. These elements combined to create a film that was more than just a thrilling narrative. It was a reflection of the times and the personal connections of those who brought it to life. In the making of this suspenseful film, the truck used as the menacing antagonist was destroyed at the end of the shoot. The vehicle, which had become a character in its own right, met its demise as part of the final scene, leaving no opportunity for preservation or display for fans and cinema enthusiasts. This loss is felt deeply by those who appreciate the film's craft as it symbolizes the permanent end of a key piece of cinematic history. The movie Duel from 1971 is a thrilling story that many remember for its suspense and the way it kept viewers on the edge of their seats. If you have memories of watching Duel, whether it was the first time on TV or a later viewing, we would love to hear how this movie touched your life or changed the way you see films. Did it scare you? Did it excite you? Maybe it sparked a love for thrillers or showed you the power of storytelling with minimal characters. Share your stories with us and join the conversation. Your experiences add value to the history of this film. If you enjoy these trips down memory lane and discussions about classic films, remember to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Your support helps us bring more of these discussions to you. Let's keep the legacy of Duel alive together.